Hello, everyone out there, and welcome to our second edition of First Light. Um, so just to tell you a bit more about First Light, the project, if you haven't heard um, about it so far, uh, it's First Light is a project born out of lockdown to showcase a fantastic photographic work coming out of photo BA courses in the north of England, brought to you in partnership through Waterside Trafford and Open Eye Gallery in Liverpool. Uh, the project will come in, culminate in an exhibition in May this year at Castlefield Gallery New Art Spaces in Warrington, curated by myself uh, with co-curator Paul, um, Polly Palmarini of Museum of Half Truths, as well as a publication and, uh, produced by Open Eye, edited and produced by Laura Robertson of the double negative. Uh, the season of talks chaired by Laura and myself will bring together the photographers, writers and educators who are central to this project. Uh, so um, just a few house rules uh, before we start in, in earnest. So we've enabled the chat function. So you are welcome to comment throughout the event. This is a safe space and we ask that you are respectful to the panelists and attendees. If you have a question, please put it in the Q&A box and we'll answer, we will answer any questions at the end. This instalment entitled Earthly Matter will revolve around the work of David Ketley and his unusual tactile approach to the photographic practice. Um, so just to introduce our guests, there's uh, three guests with me tonight. I'm delighted to be joined by David Ketley, Laura Robertson and Michelle Lazenby. Um, I'll just tell you a bit about each of our guests before we proceed with, the, with, uh, with talking about David's work and uh, Laura's response as well as David and Michelle's uh, background in education together. Um, so David um, graduated from Sheffield Hallam and he now lives in Halifax. His work strives to confront the fundamentals of what could be considered photography, breaking it down to its core values and further still. Inspired by the 90s movement of concrete art and the works of Stephen Gill and Matthew Brandt, David uses conceptual processes coupled with scientific methods to create imagery. Uh, which also joined by Michelle Lazenby. Hi, Michelle. Uh, oh. Hi there. And hi, David, as well. Sorry to not, not say hello, how rude. Uh, Michelle Lazenby is an artist and senior lecturer teaching on the BA uh, Honours Photography uh, Programme at Sheffield Hallam University. She works with still and moving image, with and without cameras, sometimes creating installations. Her work has also been exhibited internationally and is held in various public and private collections, including the Wellcome Trust and Dow Jones. She has undertaken several artists' residencies and once set a world record for producing the longest negative and converting the rooms of the Glaswegian High Rise Council flat into a camera obscura. So very ambitious work there. In another, she recorded insect behavior previously unknown to expert entomologists. So hopefully we'll hear a bit more about that uh, during the talk. So. Um, we'd like to start, and hi Laura as well. Sorry, I didn't say hi to you either. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we'd like to start really by the, the talk focuses on primarily on the work of David. Um, he's one of the selected artists for uh, the exhibition, which will be coming up in May, and for the publication also. And um, yeah, so we, we'd we'd like to inquire with David as to as to as to how his practice started. And um, so could you could you tell us your kind of first early journeys into photography, David? How, obviously, I think it's safe to say your your um, approach to photography isn't like most people's. Uh, it doesn't evolve a camera for, for starters. And you're, you're more interested in the kind of materiality, I guess, the materials of photography. Um, so yeah, it's, there's, you're working within a tradition, but it's 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 quite a niche area in photography. Can you tell us about your kind of early forays into into that area, and yeah, what what kicked off that kind of a that passion for that for that particular uh, approach? Yeah, well, I think um, my family's always been quite um, enthusiastic about photography. My granddad um, uh, was a a, a photographer. And yeah, so uh, he kind of passed it on to my dad. And then as a young kid growing up, I was always around lots of cameras. And I think just as for a young child, I think cameras are just a really nice toy. Um, mm. They're just quite interactive. So I'd always had like, um, yeah, a fascination with photography. But I think I only really start to develop a practice until um, definitely on, uh, on my BA. 
but I think in um, in college, looking back, I can see some of the, um, the interest kind of peeking through, even though they weren't really kind of fully realized at the time. But say in my, um, yeah, for my A-level, I was still quite um, interested in this physicality of photography and kind of breaking this illusion of um of the of the of the photo instead mm. of looking in you know kind of revealing that it's a, a two that it is a 2d surface and not like a window into this 3d um into this 3d picture so mm. i'd like um i remember um burning uh prints to kind of uh, make the the ink bubble and kind of uh, create this texture on top or like scratching um the surface um and I didn't really realize at the time, but um, yeah, I think that was a, a good um, foundation of the of this um, interest with the physicality of photography. Yeah, so you, you actually had a curiosity about the materials, I think, didn't you? It sounds like yeah, you definitely. just wanted to know perhaps what happened when you burnt some uh, burnt the material. You wanted to see, um, embrace, you know, the kind of unknown in a sense, perhaps. Um, it sounds like anyway from 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 that from you know that that. Uh, that yeah that willingness to 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 play and burn the actual the actual photographs yeah it, it was all it was quite playful really it was just experimental I just kind of wanted just to yeah just have fun with it and um, yeah. and yeah it was always quite experimental definitely and even now still I don't really know what I'm gonna get out of um out of a shoot it's always quite um yeah unknown yeah so it's kind of yeah uh in a collaboration with Chance, in a way, it's kind of a definitely, journey. Definitely, yeah. Memory, yeah. Um, so, so you went to university at that point, and then I guess you you were you were already traveling down that kind of route. And then, um, can you tell us about your kind of early work there? Obviously, we'll we'll talk more about the the project that will be shown at the gallery shortly. But can you tell us about how what your early kind of foundation with that practice was? Yeah. Yeah. So. When I first started university, um, the first, uh, the very first semester was analog based. We weren't allowed to use any anything digital. We had to print um, using old analog um, printers as well. So I was quite um, um, like directed, I guess, to to using um, analog film, um, analog film photography. But I, I, I was interested in that, in that um, in that anyway. But I remember. Uh, what sparked it was um, looking at the artist Matthew Brandt, uh, as you said in my in the the bio. I think uh, specifically his projects, lakes and reservoirs, mm. where um, he would go around to well various well, uh, lakes and reservoirs around America, uh, photograph them, and then sample the water, and then print them on a on a special uh, C type print, and then allow the uh, the water to kind of soak in and manipulate the ink of the image mm. and I just liked um I just really liked the idea of allowing the subject of the photograph to like physically interact with the surface so I just kind of thought um well uh, luckily Sheffield um is just next to the Peak District so I thought um yeah I could like go around and take pictures of the Peak District and then uh, bury the film there or just or maybe like take some of the soil home uh, and try that but I, I ended up just burying them actually in the landscape and um, yeah I just um, I, I really like the idea of um, kind of like you say in collaboration with uh, with chance but also with nature and I think using using the earth and using the soil as like a separate entity to um, to manipulate the image as well mm. um, yeah, I just got um, fascinated with it. And then ever since that project in first semester, it's like, I've, it's kind of like sparked um, a constant evolution, really. After every project, I think, oh, yeah, well, I could try this. And yeah. So, yeah, on, on to that next project, I guess it's quite a big jump. You're working with Earth initially and, yeah, you're interacting with the stuff of stuff of Earth and the soil. And then you you moved on to to uh to kind of human saliva well, can you explain that kind of jump from one that's quite an unusual subject matter yeah that's, it, it is a bit i've never seen a project dealing with that really so can you tell us about how that transition kind of happened and yeah what spurred that on yeah so i remember um it really happened in second year so i would um i still uh, i was still really fascinated with with this idea of like physically um, exposing the film 
um, to, to organic matter. So I kind of thought um, using similar techniques, but instead of like going into the Peak District and burying it in the landscape, I could try using different organic matter. Like uh, I tried apples, um, I tried uh, meat, uh, various things like that. But at, the, at that point, it was I was still kind of jumping around and experimenting. Mm. Um, and the project wasn't really um defined it didn't really have any themes it was it was still very much experimenting with this um with this technique sure so i kind of thought um to to give it that theme and to give it that um that foundation of like key ideas i, I could try for like um uh try using uh, my own like uh bodily fluids um my uh my own sub organic matter to create like an abstract self-portraiture kind of context uh, I see. Yeah, yeah, so that, that's really where it started from. Um, I didn't really want to um, try anything too uh, weird, I guess. So I, I just kind of ended up. I think saliva was a bit was tame enough, really. And yeah, I guess there's lots of directions you could go with, you know, yeah, with definitely the substances. So I guess saliva is a safe place to start. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that that was that's intriguing about what you say about self portraiture. I mean, yeah, looking at them. He, Obviously, yeah, they're 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 incredibly abstract. Uh, it does not feature your face or your likeness, uh, but it's it's fundamentally a part. You are it's a picture of you, uh, which is uh, yeah, it, it's 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 very it's yeah, it's a unique unique way to look at look at the the, the human subject really in photography. I think so. Um, so thanks for that, David. So. Yeah, we, we've got Laura Robertson here, and she has actually written a piece about um, about David's work, which we've all read. And it's uh, and yeah, it's 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 an, such as the ambition of First Light. We're we're looking for kind of artistic responses to photography. Uh, we're not looking to just interpret photography in a straightforward way. We're looking at photography as a catalyst for for uh, creative responses, really, through writing. So, and Laura's kind of, you know, spearheading this, being the editor and being, being having brought this idea to the table. And uh, she, she has actually contributed a piece of writing uh, to the publication and she has responded to David's work in this instance, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah, Laura, it's yeah quite unexpected to to uh, and and beautifully so really uh, in terms of in terms of uh, the way you've written about David's work. So can you tell us a bit about where that came from and what 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 sparked you to kind of take that take that angle and perhaps tell us about what that angle is. And I know we're gonna we're gonna have a reading shortly at the end of this um, about uh, from Laura's uh, piece. But yeah, if you could just give us a hint as to yeah how how you how you went about responding to the work. Well, maybe I could leave it as a cliffhanger now. <laughs> <laughs> I was just really inspired by David's work. I think been working on this project, firstly, has been a thrill um, and a pleasure. Uh, everybody on the team, every contributor has been brilliant. Um, and we've recruited not just the photographers that you mentioned at the first uh, in the introduction there, but that we're, of course we're all going to see in the exhibition next month, which I'm so excited about. I can mm. actually go and see an exhibition. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we've put together this arts writing anthology as well. So I was really keen to recruit graduates from all different types of BA courses from around the Northwest. So we've got creative writing graduates, English literature graduates, fine art graduates, photography graduates, all who have a keen interest in writing, but who have never really tried anything like this before and really want to get to grips with writing about photography in particular and see where that, the format can take us really away from, up to the side through traditional arts criticism and out the other side, um, like short fiction which I've contributed to the book. Um, all the contributions from the other writers include poetry, um, feature writing. It's a really, really interesting publication mm -hmm. and something which we wanted to act as a companion piece, I suppose, for the exhibition rather than a straightforward uh, exhibition catalogue. 
So mm. hopefully everyone can pick the book up, enjoy the photography within it, and then find some other world into the work. Mm. It definitely lets other worlds and other people and other voices in. I think it's a really expansive book so far. I mean, we're still in the editing stage, but I'm excited for you all to read it. And that's just kind of my bag, really. I'm I'm really into um, 500 word text at the moment. I think it's a really fantastic way to get to grips with art. I think you can say things very quickly with the 500 word format. Um, it's incredibly challenging, mm. but so much fun to play with. Um, and I'm sure loads of people read 500 review 500 word reviews all the time. For example, Art Review have a huge section of 500 word reviews, and they really believe in that kind of size of text to get a point across very quickly. It's like telling the story of something, isn't it? Um, that can be read in under five minutes, basically. And I'm a huge sci-fi fan, uh, which you'll be able to tell. <laughs> You'll be able to tell that later, but I was particularly inspired when I was talking to David about this idea of the anti-portrait or the self-portrait. So him taking images of his internal life. Um, yeah, so I was thinking about, I went back to Richard Matheson's The Shrinking Man, the 1956 um, classic sci-fi, and read the last few chapters of that when Scott, 10 sub atomic he gets so small he doesn't die he just continues to get smaller and smaller and this is a massive revelation for him in the book and yeah so that's kind of what's inspired my text i see okay so yeah it's um <laughs> it was interesting yeah in that 500 word format it, it, i love the way it lets you into a little world but then it leaves you quite quite quickly and and it's it's left to you to kind of fill in the blanks in that world really and uh it kind of reminds me of how photography works in a sense as well it doesn't really answer that many questions but it's yeah, it just allows uh your imagination to open up to it so yeah i i really liked looking at david's images and looking at the work they they, they really kind of fed each other which was which is kind of the aim of this project isn't it so and uh, yeah, how did, I'm curious to know, yeah, how, how, how did you find it, David, reading something which was, uh, I've only, I know you've only recently read it, but it, how, how did you find it reading something which was, uh, uh, which for, for, you, for which your work was a catalyst, you know, so it's, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess you got a connection to the work, so how does it feel for someone to respond to it in this way? Yeah. I'm curious. It's, it's an honour, really, I mean, reading through it just, um, yeah, it's, um, I could like picture um, like the same kind of imagery in like in my head. Like um, I won't I won't um, say anything about it actually. Um, don't want to spoil it, but yeah, it was just it was really um, yeah, it was really it was really um, it's honouring really just to just to have that kind of impact on someone. And I, I just think um, it it really um, gets across the 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 idea of the the nebulas and like this kind of like the spatial. Um, uh yeah the spe astral like uh aesthetic but also um yeah the, the size and the scale of it really uh both big and both big and small um yeah it was it was just it was really interesting definitely that's what's lovely about your work david i love that paradox between you know enormous and tiny and beauty and revulsion and the different types of materials that you're engaging with. The process is fantastic. It's super interesting. I love the fact that it's been, you know, a formative part of you discovering where you, you were studying and getting to know the landscape and getting to know yourself on that journey. It's so interesting. Um, but also like that paradox within materials, you know, hard and soft uh, flesh and, and marrow and, and star matter and thinking about scars on the surface as well these beautiful marks that you're able to capture that we can see behind us we've all got mm -hmm. images of david's work behind us mm -hmm. simply by spitting on some film in a petri dish you know leaving leaving the bacteria to do the work um it's really come up with these sensational marks that 
can be compared to marks on the body, marks that are prized and despised. I love that contrast of the sky above us, the universe without, and the systems within us, the universe within that you can just so easily see and relate to in, in these photographs. They really are fantastic. And it was a huge amount of fun to write about them. Now, how did you find it, Michelle? I know um, you, you, were, you were aware of David's work from, from when he was studying with you. Um, yeah, how did you find just reading such an un unusual response to the to, to, to I haven't read it yet. Oh, I, I'm apologies. waiting for it to be read out. Uh, apologies. Okay. It'll yeah, be well, a surprise. Really... It'll be a surprise, Michelle, at the end. Yeah, no, I'm really, <laughs> I am really excited, actually. And I love sci-fi as well. And I just think it's a really exciting, uh, it's lovely to have somebody respond and take something in another direction. And it gives it another dimension, doesn't it? it I think yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, dimensions, I think, is a key word, definitely, for this. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, what struck me, not to, not to, you know, reveal too much before Laura reads it to us, is, uh, yeah, this, this, the kind of, you've, you've really managed to capture the, the, the shift between 3D and 2D, which was, I think, really integral to David's work. Uh, uh, and, yeah, in, in it, your protagonist has that moment where he's, his perception changes from 3D to 2D. And, yeah, that's, you see that in David's work, um, in the kind of abrasions and the tears on the surface, uh, whereas the kind of nebulous forms that, that the bacteria has formed seems to go on forever, uh, which is a strange, it's a strange experience looking at it. And looking at a, a, a picture of outer space recently, I... Uh, there was a picture of black holes and they seem to be kind of tearing into the surface of space. And, uh, you know, it was, it's bizarre because space seems to go on infinitely and then these black holes are kind of tearing at this fabric almost, which is 2D. So, uh, you know, looking behind me there, we got David's picture with that kind of hole in a the negative there. And it just seems to kind of puncture that kind of infinite space. So, yeah, I, 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 thought, I thought it really, it made me think of that, you know, so it kind of opened up the work further for me, which was, yeah, which is, so job well done, Laura, I thought, yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, Michelle, just, just to, uh, just to bring you into the conversation, um, in terms of, in terms of when you first came across David, so when he, he joined you at SHU, and I take it you were the you were the lecturer on the, in the first year, is that right? With the analog process in that, that first year. semester. Yeah. Yeah, in the analog semester, and um, yeah, so we start with a cameraless project, and then we go on to an analog landscape project. And David managed to find a really interesting way to bring the cameraless into the landscape mm. by burying the materials and. Um, it was, it was a real pleasure working with David because he was so curious and so willing to like get his hands dirty, but you know, like just get in there and do things and not afraid of, of taking risks, very experimental, um, very creative, very enthusiastic. And um, we would have really good conversations. It, it would be very lovely to have him come into a tutorial and say, I've just got the results from this film I buried. And then we'd have these conversations and look at the results. And, you know, with, with this way of working, some things are gonna work really well and, that, you know, be something to be very excited about. And other things are gonna be like, okay, let's put that to one side. Cause it, there is so much hit and missness of working in, in that way. But it, it's it's kind of taking control of how oh. exploit the results in a, in a positive way. and. Yeah, I think David had one of the most outstanding um, submissions for the end of that semester for, mm. for his practical work. And, and yeah, yeah, it was good. It, it, felt, um, it felt a bit like I found a kindred spirit, I think, in terms of yeah. the interests and the excitement about the materiality and the process and just the let, let's see what happens when you do this. And yeah. then there was a couple of times when you when you said, David, oh, I'm not sure I'll be able to find it again where I buried it. <laughs> <laughs> but you always, I think, 
<laughs> yeah, I was but wondering yeah. that if, if yeah, early on you could, you, you saw that, hang on, yeah, you know, I, I know that feeling from being a lecturer myself, finding someone who, who kind of shares your vision in a sense, in a kind of broad sense, and uh, and kind of, you know, understands you. But yeah, it's, it's interesting to see that you, you yeah. Some you common that. ground. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. That, and, that, and that carried on throughout the, throughout the course, really, did it, in terms of, you know. Um, well, I didn't, I didn't actually work with David in second year, but he made a very good, um, there was a student exhibition and he, he pushed it formally and did a really uh, successful, effective display with these long kind of scroll like uh, prints that trailed onto the floor. That, mm. that was, I mean, it was degree show standard work, actually. Mm. It was very, very well executed and uh, really intriguing and exciting. Yeah. So it was, it was nice to see that, that, that um, I think every time we would sort of pass each other and have a little conversation, it'd be like, yeah, I'm still really interested in the cameraless. And, and, mm. But the, the um, you know, going through the course that, with the different things that are taught theoretically as well as practically, then there was increasingly um, an un a conceptual underpinning that, you know, maybe in the beginning, it was like, let's just see what happens, but, course, but it became yeah. more and more um, tight. As, yeah, you know, there are reasons why he was choosing particular substances or particular methodologies, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, so yeah, does that, does that feature in your, in your, in the, in the course content in general, in terms of, is that, is that a, is that a priority at SHU in, on, on your program to kind of promote that, that way of working in terms of, you know, um, I think, ways? I think it, it's a priority at the very, very beginning, uh, because at the very, very beginning, it's like, let's go about, let, let's let go of all your preconceptions and, and history and let's come back in and, and take strip things right back to those basic primal elements of what yeah. is photography, the magic of photography. And kind of learning about the historical roots, but also just that real tactile, direct contact with stuff and what happens, you know, you in the dark, you in the light, you with this, this stuff. Sure, yeah. Um, but after that first semester, you know, there's, there's lots of students that really can't wait just to be working in a nice clean way digitally, <laughs> you know, where it's much more controlled. But there's always um, a little contingent of people that for their final final project, their major project before they graduate, they they work in some way with concrete photography or alternative processes or you know mm -hmm. something analog and it might be cameraless, it might be something else. But there's also a sense of how do you make these things that are maybe 200 years old or is it 200 years, 150 years? I don't know. Um, how do you make those relevant now? You know how 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 does your project deal with the now, even though you're using this, these very old materials and processes? Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. I think it's yeah such a valuable lesson for for students at the early stages, like you say, because there's so much emphasis on perfection, especially when you can you know achieve such such kind of precision and perfection with with digital uh, working. You know what, that. Well, that kind of manipulation of oh, we'll just yeah. we'll just fix that. We'll just make something yes, up yes. in Photoshop, you know. Yeah. But there's something about with the um, with the especially with cameraless. It's like it is what it is, you know. Mm. It's registered what happened. It's registered yeah. what it had contact with, mm. and and it, there's an authenticity there that you can't argue with. That's true. It's much more. Uh much more uh, certain than perhaps some documentary uh, approaches, perhaps, you know, it's, 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 it's photographic truth, I guess, it's what happened materially on that surface. It is. Yeah, interesting, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, how did you, how did you, did you have a similar feeling, David, that you, you found someone kind of uh, that, that understood you, you know, in a sense, when you- Yeah, when you, definitely. I mean, uh, Michelle was a great, um, yeah, influence, especially in, in, that, in that first semester when, um, when the idea kind of sparked really uh, especially um, like uh, more like uh, in terms of key ideas and themes kind of um, obviously I'd, I'd go out and do this uh, experiment that I really enjoyed but I didn't really have um, like a good um, theoretical foundation really and Michelle kind of helped me develop that you know, like uh, using the earth as, um, as a different entity and the chance of nature and the um, yeah, all, all these, diff these different ideas kind of coming 
uh, coming into the project to influence it even more and um, steer it in a, in a different direction. Um, mm. Yeah, and it's interesting that, um, that you talk about the, um, you know, using using this analog and and uh, yeah, my work definitely is, but I, I think it's also um, using a, a like dig it's like the combination digital uh, and analog because obviously uh, these are all scans, these are all digital scans of the, and they are they are um, I do manipulate them a bit in Photoshop. That's that's mainly just for um, to compensate for the scanner because it's best to scan it really flat and then. So it just kind of like lift up a bit, but I think um, I think that just strengthens strengthens it even more to um, to have this idea of uh, combining both mediums mm. as well. I think that's um, uh, a, a big part of the work as well. Yeah, I think that's where exciting things can happen now, isn't it? To kind of to uh, see how you can take bring these old processes in, 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 into 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 kind of the digital realm as well. Yeah, I think uh, and. Michelle, I know you, you don't just uh, rely on analog processes. You also you also bring in kind of digital process into your into your work yeah. and there's a kind of symbiosis there too. Yeah. Well, you know, it's fu it's funny because I think there. <laughs> um, I, I I actually uh, when I started teaching the camera list stuff as a project in itself, it made me, it kind of triggered me to go much deeper into it and start making, I, I had a really, uh, three or four years where I was just making, 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 everything I was making was camera list. I got really, really excited about it. And for quite a while, I, I think I felt that um, the prints I were making, that was the work. And then I had this kind of realization at a certain point that no, the prints I'm making are a negative that I can scan and I can change the scale and I can, I, you know, just like you would with a negative in a dark room where you enhance things by dodging and burning or, you know, making things darker or lighter, you can use um, the cameraless work in the same way. So, um, yeah, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> uh, that, that kind of synthesis <laughs> of uh, analog and digital, I guess. And, yeah, that, what excites you? Oh, yeah, in yeah. That, in that, in that, well, yeah, that's, well, that's normal, I guess, yeah. It gives you a lot of a lot more scope, doesn't it, for for fine tuning and tweaking things. And yeah. I and I think you know some of the most exciting work in the last 10, 15 years was um, Thomas Roof's virtual photograms, where it was absolutely totally done in a in a virtual. Yeah, um, I was really setting. intrigued by that work. But there yeah. Was still some art. yeah. Yeah, but he still because he wanted to have control but he still found that things would arise that were had not been predicted yes there yes, was yes. still surprises which i think is really lovely i think so i think you know think, the digital you world like is still a is still a, a kind of natural construct in a sense uh and it's, it still you know has has elements of chaos in it you know which is which is quite interesting um, yeah 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 so as we know every time we the computer well exactly <laughs> it doesn't yeah. always go <laughs> yeah these kind planned. of glitches and uh etc you know the uncontrollable elements yeah so which takes us back to last week's uh <laughs> talk uh, talk from the previous uh first light spotlight so i just wanted to um just bring everyone into this really just uh, some ideas that for me, uh, are really important in David's work and some we've touched on, but perhaps we can dig a little deeper. Uh, so this yeah, idea of self-portraiture and this kind of inner world and outer world. And yeah, this idea of the self kind of uh, the self just being a construct of, of various different uh, organisms. Uh, we have this idea of ourselves as being this unified, uh, coherent thing, but it's it's actually you know, science reveals that it's actually an inter a delicate interplay between lots of different um, systems and processes. And uh, yeah, I just w wondered if you had any thoughts on that, any of you really, in terms of, yeah, if, that, if that's, that's something that was, if that, first of all, David, yeah, if that was something that occurred to you while making the work or. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I remember um, I wanted to actually, um, a key factor of my work is uh, during during the pro um, project on my uh, BA app, the, um, the research that I did for this project, uh, it kind of, it led me to um, a very recent um, field of, of science um, and of research, and that's to do with um, the microbiome uh, within within the human gut. And uh, within like the last decade, the research has found that 
the all these like millions and millions um billions even of microorganisms inside um inside of ourselves actually have a direct impact direct correlation with um our our minds and and how we and how our how brains even think and there's even um research to show um that they have an impact on things like uh ADHD or other mental illnesses, like, um, depression, anxiety. Like it's it's fascinating that this um, network inside of us is, if not um, the the same, we're just as complicated, if not more complicated than the network in our in our head. I think that's mm. um, yeah, it's just fascinating, and it it backs up this um, yeah, it helps contextualize this idea of a self portrait. You know, I'm not just taking, um, you know, by photographing these microorganisms and photographing um yeah my mind in a way um yeah yeah so it's it's yeah and portrait from the inside out in a sense it's kind of a yeah yeah it's, it's actually yeah perhaps an even truer representation of just you know photographing an expression of on your face you know so that's that's very interesting isn't that uh, crazy this, to think that the gut would have a direct impact on the brain it's just not Oh, it has a direct really? impact on my brain every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're calling it the second brain, aren't they? That there's so many things that your brain, your gut does that we don't realize. Mm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was speaking to someone yesterday who eats a very strict diet. Um, and yeah, he's, he's kind of noticed in himself that by through eating meat that completely changes the kind of the the, the mood he's in and the, mm. the kind of, uh, so so it's yeah so he's kind of cut cut that out from his diet because he's quite perceptive to 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 those changes yeah so it's yeah it's really interesting yeah um david, into uh, that system. yeah sorry, sorry again, to say, david writes really well about this mm. and when i interviewed him and when i read his the text on his website that was, you know, that was such uh, a rich vein for a writer to, to mull over, you know. Um, I'll just quote him from his statement on this, on Celestial Bodies, this particular project. Just two lines I really love that David had, had written. There are more microorganisms living inside the human body than there are stars in our galaxy. Mm. Capturing the microbes that account for more of our sense of self than we may first realize. That's such a rich idea. And I think it's very exciting, the sense of an anti-portrait being more about the micro DNA, the chemicals, the things that connect us to the ecology that we have to live in. And just thinking of ourselves more as like a plant or fungi or something rather than this you know this ego this human ego <laughs> that's obsessed with with beauty or intelligence it's just kind of trying to capture a different type of intelligence isn't it that's very very old and very essential and 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 just a key building block of life yeah so just just to go back to the, the process really we haven't properly talked about exactly how this is done so you actually you actually apply saliva onto photographic film is that right what we're looking at behind us if you can just describe to us quickly david oh sure. yeah so i mean my process is still quite um rudimentary really it's not um i know it's quite it's quite a sciencey um uh, method of photography but yeah it, it's just like tupperware that, I've, that i bought at, at wilco's or something it's nothing <laughs> nothing too fancy um yeah so i, I had uh go into the makeshift dark room um in my bathroom and then um yeah just uh, directly spill onto the film and then i'd leave it there for um i've done uh, i think the images um, behind us of one week and then just allow it to sit completely still and allow the the bacteria and the and the microorganisms to um uh yeah just to uh work the way across the film and to to interact with because it's not just the the gelatin um it's like the, the, they'll be interacting with silver as well obviously the the silver crystals within the within the film so yeah and then after 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 that i'd take it out and just develop it like any normal um piece of film uh 
and then uh, scan it in and do a, do some touch uh, touch up. But yeah, it's um it's a quite a frustrating process, but it's it's really satisfying at the end because obviously imagine like a, a scientist applying this bacteria to a to a petri dish, but in complete darkness and they can't they can't see it evolve. So it's very yeah. um uh yeah you've got a you got you it, it, it tests my patience really sometimes mm. i mean it's, it's, it's i find it interesting i wonder i'm curious whether whether you knew going into this you know when you first had the idea okay i can use my own saliva um in this kind of process uh wh- whether you had any idea what you whether you had any idea what you'd find really was it was it what were you that first moment when of uh, of of uh, scanning in the film and that kind of moment of discovery. What were you surprised? What was what did I feel like? Um, I I knew, I I knew that something would um, appear on the film. Um, I think uh, like, at least I, I really hope so. But what I found with my um, research before in that really experimental phase where I was applying like. Um, I was applying like uh, apples. I applied mo- uh, moldy bread um, to allow the mold to like grow onto the film as well. And I found that the the things with more bacteria. So you, the grosser the thing is that I'm applying to the film, the better the image turns out. Uh, <laughs> annoyingly, but yes, because I knew that the, the, there are bacteria. Um, there is bacteria inside my uh, saliva. I knew that there would be something. Um, but yeah, even once developed, the film is still it's still really see through, and you can only see like, um, like bits of patterns on it. There isn't really anything to look at actually on the film. Um, so even then, like I take it out of the developing tray, and it's completely see through. It's like oh god. Um, but yeah, once I've developed, uh, once I've actually scanned it in and uh, played with the settings a bit, then this whole um, imagery is just uh, revealed. It's really um, uh, satisfying, really. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been something just to see this kind of nebulous and uh, and kind of star-like form suddenly appear on yeah what you what was what you assumed was just spit on plastic essentially yeah it's it's I mean for for me this work uh, what's what's really you know incredibly strong for me about it is it kind of uh, that, that paradox of uh, of being human it really kind of bears that out really so you've got this you know, base substance, which is saliva and bacteria and, you know, this bodily fluid, which, uh, you know, we find as humans quite repellent in a sense in civilized society. Um, and, and then, you know, you've, you've rather than kind of uh, taking your gaze away from that, you've actually looked hard at it and in great detail and found, found these kind of, uh, this outer outer this kind of celestial uh views really so so yeah that that's 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 the kind of power that kind of duality of the work i think is is its power perhaps yeah i wonder what laura and michelle what if you have any kind of thoughts around that Laura, go for it. Going <laughs> <laughs> to mean to drop you in it there, but yeah. <laughs> I just can't wait to. I just keep thinking about how David's going to present the work. I know there's a question. There's been a question come in about that. Yeah. But yeah. um, I just love this idea, as Michelle pointed to before, about the 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 work being presented on a photo rag like this huge strip, and how that's progressed for the exhibition into these almost sculptural 2D and 3D panels that the public are going to see. And I'm just really excited about people being able to see the the texture of the work and the material and and the the liquid and the erosion and the bite marks and the burning and and the enzymes of it all. I think it's a very tactile um work that deserves to be seen really on a big scale <laughs> closely and not on a screen as I've unfortunately had. I mean, we've all had to look at David's work on a screen. Michelle's seen it in real life as of you, Mario, but I haven't and I've had my only interaction with it has been through the computer. So I'm so excited to see it up close and how 
how I can compare it to kind of almost painting and sculpture in my mind. So yeah, me and David have been talking and 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 planning in terms of how to how to how to make the work exist in the physical world. So yeah, David, yeah, how's it how 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 do you see it going really? Are you quite excited about the prospect of getting it out there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think um it's kind of work like like you said, Laurel, it's it's um it has to be big, definitely, which is um it's hopefully going. I mean, should I try to explain the design yeah don't give don't give it all away david but yeah just uh (laughs) it's going to be um we want to kind of reinforce this idea of a micro and macro you know um this this huge these huge galaxies and this tiny little um microorganism so there's going to be like one uh big a0 print um in black and white and then there's going to be um certain sections uh printed out actually um on um, yeah, actually printed out uh, and then uh, oh, what's a mounted real... on aluminium? Yeah, mounted. That's it. Yeah, mounted onto yeah. onto aluminium. Um, Some kind of straight. Yeah, in color. So, uh, so yeah, so certain sections are, are going to be in color, and it I mean, it looks it looks really good on on digital. Um, on digital on on the screen. Um. <laughs> So again, it's a bit of a voyage of discovery, isn't it? We, we, yeah. you know, we'll only find out when we actually do it. In the I, space, I think but... when, um, sorry, when, when yeah. before the lockdown happened, one of the discussions we had in your very final semester was, you know, how, how, how do you illuminate it so that it feels like space in that way that, you know, and so we did talk about light boxes at one yeah. point. Yeah, 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 I think, I mean, that was actually my original, um, well, I did propose the idea to um, to Mario as well. Um, I think, but well, uh, there were some technical issues really because the the crops, like these pictures behind the pictures behind us, uh, are crops of the of the full scan, um, and they won't be able. Um, we wouldn't be able to enlarge them up um, to like a zero or or anything like that. So um, we, yeah, we've had to kind of like uh, we had to compensate uh, by showing the full scan um, as well as these uh, crops which um which are the body uh, which is the body of work um but i'd still really like to do light boxes i think that that'll be absolutely perfect for the work that works so nicely as well wonder, yeah. yeah yeah i think it would be it would be great i wonder if at some point in the future you could get access to like a medical grade scanner you know like that could mm. really go goes right into the detail that would be so exciting wouldn't it yeah good drum scan you probably get a lot more information out of it to be honest but yeah I, th- I think this is the beauty of the work I think there's so many possible iterations uh of it you know so I've, you know and how that opens up so many possibilities beyond the screen doesn't it how how you actually how you actually open up that work and and present it in in a physical space so yeah um so just before we move on to questions thanks everyone so far um just wanted to Ask David, how's it been? I know you know we we're kind of coming out of lockdown now, but it, it was it must have been a tough time, perhaps in in terms of uh, being a student uh, during during the pandemic. So, just yeah, how, how have you have you have you found the challenge really? And yeah, um, yeah. Well, I've um, I'm currently doing a BA, uh, not BA, uh, currently doing my MA. Um, and it's I mean it's been really hard. I think with especially for for. A, analog practice um i was you know hoping to use the facilities there to develop the film but i've just kind of um i've just just kind of had to um do it myself and makeshift um these facilities that i i once had access to and the facilities at shoe are amazing um so going from that to <laughs> my bathroom um boarded up and, and using um yeah bottles of um like old Pepsi bottles full of um, film developer. It's, it's it feels like a bit of a step down, but yeah, I've just had to um, just find ways around of still achieving these images. I did have to buy I did buy a scanner. That's um, uh, I, I didn't have to buy a proper one, but I was planning on I was planning on getting a, a proper scanner anyway. But yeah, that's the most expensive thing I've had to buy in terms of reacting to the lockdown and working at home. Um, but it's it's been interesting, definitely. Um, Laura, take it away with uh, your reading of of um, on David's work. Thank you. 
and then um, this will be a couple of minutes and then we can go to questions at the end, right? Because we've got a few good ones. Okay. Celestial bodies. It's a star crash, the traveller thought. He drifted through it, a dazzling cloud of gas and dust, almost unbearable in its scale. He could see proto stars, hot baby stars in the first stages of their development. Like diamonds, each one needed a tremendous amount of pressure. The cloud's own gravitational collapse would push and press them into existence over a long, long time. It was a drunk perspective, a blue and red mist that dispersed confusingly away from him against layer upon layer of filmy deposits, which he realized were other galaxies behind it, hundreds of millions of light years away. And behind, behind these lay a bottomless blackness, a black, black material that the stars ate away at burning hydrogen into helium, hungrily, burning helium then into carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. Stars sculpt the shape of their cluster. They sculpt the world around them. Every star had a different brilliance, something to do with the magnetic field interacting with the gas. His ship tracked and logged every budding sun its dimensions, velocity, and all dust devils left in their wake, a trail of celestial crumbs. Waste dust becomes planets. He lingered on that for a moment. He had time. He clenched and unclenched his fist to let the tension out. The insistence of life was too much. The cloud just went on and on and on. Oh, to live for 10 billion years. And what a death, a supernova to rattle the gods. His would barely make the news. What's it like to know, to be certain that your light will never be extinguished? Confident in immortality. When these stars croaked, their death explosion will be seen years after the event. Imprinted on strange eyes, separated by vast distances, and themselves condemned to the lifespan of a flickering candle. The traveller felt keenly, not knew, but actually felt the possibility of worlds within worlds. Did that make him divine matter? Whether he lasted 100 years or 100 million? He blinked exaggeratedly to wash away the imaginary supernova. Every blink left an inverted after image in black and white. Drained of its color, the universe before him flattened into an ancient 2D surface, eroded, battered, and scratched with repeating tiny patterns. He gripped the panel in front of him. Nauseous, he leant forward, suddenly feeling very, very small. The view distorted from star cloud to petri dish, from nebula to primordial soup. He was part of a dizzying string of micro and macro events. The traveller swallowed hard, licked his lips. Prehistoric parasites occupied his warm, wet mouth. He could sense them wriggling about, manipulating his immune system, his gut, his teeth, his bad breath. Anticipating a wretch, he spat and the saliva dribbled down his chin. So he did it again with more conviction and this time a satisfying gob slapped against the coal floor. The foamy blob was corrupted by mouth flora that he couldn't see, but he knew they were there. A bacterial community, 
previously on tongue and tooth were digesting the starch from his lunch into energy. Like stars, they had an insatiable need to consume. What was the difference, he thought, between in here and out there? He blinked again, took a breath and accelerated forward. The okay. end. <laughs> Bravo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really brilliant, Laura. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. I think you've really, um, sorry, I've, I've, I think it's just really um, amazing just how well you've captured just like everything um, within the within the um, the body of work really like talking about the yeah the the micro the macro I think I love the the bit talking about um, um, oh, uh, what's a uh, godly matter like um, a hundred years or a hundred million I think that's um, yeah I think that's really um, uh, like key, uh, key to this like. The bacteria inside of us might look at us as gods, but also just you know the way that we look out at um, stars or something much bigger than we could comprehend. I think that's yeah. I think yeah, yeah. It, it captured the themes really well. Well, that's what the work said to me, and and that's been the muse. So thank you. <laughs> I really enjoyed writing it. I hope you're all zooming through space right now, weightless. <laughs> Well, that's a beautiful collaboration, I think. Yeah, well, fantastic that that was born out of that. So, yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Um, we've got time for a few questions, and we've got some lovely ones here. Um, just a great comment from Kath. What a super collaboration of image and text. So, yes, quite agree. Thank you, Kath. Um, so, first of all, which direction do you see your work taking uh, from Sonia Robinson to, to David? Um I do, I've still got some ideas that, um, from way back, um, actually from uh, from first uh, first year, first semester, um, which I'd really like to um, uh, pursue. That I think there was one experiment where I buried um, the film into, um, into a plant pot. And once I, I scanned the images in and looked at them, I looked, looked at them a bit closer, I could see where the, uh, the plant had like carved its way, like the roots had carved the way through um, into the film. Mm. I still haven't like pursued that thought. I've 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 been looking at other things like um well like all, all of these, um all of this body of work. But yeah, I'd I'd really like, I'd really like to allow um a plant to, to do that um even further like, I don't know, possibly like uh, apply cress um and allow the roots to, uh, mark mark the film um. But yeah, I think that, that that's just one idea that I'm I'm open to to look at next. Reminds me of the book about fungi I'm currently reading. That might be of interest to you as well. Which are actually fungus will be another uh, <laughs> focal point of a talk coming up later in the series. Is that uh, the book of that's right. Yeah. yeah, fantastic book. Oh wow. Yeah, it's really. I never thought I'd be that interested in mushrooms, but yeah, it's it's fascinating. Um, so yeah, that's highly recommended, David. If you haven't read that, it's uh, yeah entangled life it's called uh, so um let's see next question from Rate. um it's interesting that david captures elements of both micro and mi macro in each image they do remind me of images of nebulous or an abstract painting do you think using non-digital processes and mediums allows you to play and explore more with new ideas than using digital or editing software um i like i like um i think uh, especially in this day and age, I think there's, we seem to think of um, digital and analog as like these two completely separate things um, that can't like, you know, if you like, especially I think that it's very trendy to to only use like analog uh, cameras and like, um, yeah, I think there's, there's room for both. I think there's, um, for me personally, like using these techniques, I, I thought about how could I, maybe do it digitally but i don't think a, like spitting on a on a camera sensor would uh, would get me anywhere um because <laughs> yeah with, with analog um it's you have that you have that physical connection um so yeah i think that's that's why i personally i'm, I'm using um 
film for these projects but I, I, I still I still like digital photography I think that there's still um, a really interesting um, there's there's lots of interesting ideas that you could get from from digital photography definitely mm. yeah I think it's uh, it's there's more scope for for the unexpected perhaps in the, in a, some analog processes yeah definitely definitely okay um okay i think that's all for the questions for the time being so thank you everyone for uh for joining in thank you to all our guests michelle david and laura um next week we will have uh bear with me and well, sorry not next week in two weeks time we will have a um, another first light spotlight and we'll be looking at the work of Sam Wallace and we'll be joined by Robin Fanner and John Aitken and Laura Robertson. Um, Laura Robertson will be chairing that talk and that's on the 27th of April and we'll be looking at microplastics that'll be the focus of the, of the talk so it should be fascinating. Um, I'd just like to thank all our partners so Castlefield New Art, uh, New Art Spaces, Castlefield Gallery in Manchester, Open Eye Gallery obviously, Waterside uh, Arts, Arts Centre, or sorry Waterside and Sale, Trafford, um, Spectrum Photographic, Northern Quarter Photo Studios and Village Leeds for their support so far as well. Thank you everyone for a wonderful talk and um, yes please uh, join us on Instagram. Um, and. Yes. Uh, did Sorry, you Michelle. say that if people were able to see it tonight, that they could see it on YouTube later? Yes. Did you say you've got a YouTube channel? Yes, yes, there is a YouTube channel. And we'll share the link of that on, on uh, social media for OpenEye, Waterside and the First Light Instagram feed as well. So that will be available in a week or so, I imagine. Uh, so, yeah, all of these talks will be available on the YouTube channel. Thanks, Michelle. OK, thanks very much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank and you Thank you again, everybody. Thanks everyone. Thanks very much. Thanks, Laura. Congratulations, David. Well done. Well done, Thank David. You.